Good afternoon and happy Inner Source Day. I'm really happy to be with you today to talk again about the amazing progress of the Inner Source Commons community and um, how fun it is to be working on this project uh, for all this time. So today or this year is seven years that we've been meeting in this way to try to um, share the information that we have about how to use open source methods inside proprietary organizations and also why you might want to do that. Um, and in that seven years, we've gotten together in person a number of times, but that hasn't been possible for the last couple of years. So now, of course, we are doing these um, summits virtually, but we are hoping to get back to in person um, next year, along with everybody else. I did go to a couple of events earlier in this month that, that were in person events and it's a little soon uh, for a lot of people. So I think, um, you know, waiting a little bit longer was smart for us to do. But anyway, it's really helpful for us to get together because that's where we find most of our best contributors is by um, providing the stickiness of the community. So um, we learned that trick and a lot of other tricks from our friends at the Apache Software Foundation. Um, this is a picture of the founders that were around during the 20th anniversary last year of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, our way of working is very similar to theirs. We um, reward volunteers that go above and beyond the call of duty with membership. And you'll hear more about that later. But that means that the foundation is actually owned by the members, the people that have put in the most effort. And um, in that way, you know, every, anybody that gets involved can become part of InterSource Commons in a really material way. Um, some of the problems that InterSource is known to fix, and you'll hear a lot about this over the course of the day, but um, just for a quick refresher, uh, in the upper left-hand corner there, its main use is companies that have over-invested in ownership culture in their engineering organizations and are looking to get rid of the silos that maybe are now not so, so helpful. Um, one of the ways that you can tell that your silo culture is not working for you anymore is if you have an awful lot of traffic jams, like in the upper right-hand corner, your traffic flow isn't really smooth and people are waiting around. Um, that's an that's a sign that you've you've invested too much in ownership culture. Um, and in the lower left hand corner, we have another interesting effect, which is people um, whose companies run too well, uh, it, who it, nobody ever steps out of line, sometimes have trouble finding innovation and keeping up with uh, the new kids. But InterSource has been shown to create opportunities for people looking to change that. And then we say it every time, the, the kids that you can hire today, the new crop of developers that um, are your least costly employees uh, are expecting more agency and more transparency and um, will not be productive employees typically if you don't help them with that. And um, so we really believe this is going to be the way that everybody does software engineering going forward. And companies that get out in front of that will have a much smoother transition um, to you know, dealing with the expectations of the future workforce. So um, InterSource uses the same collaborative methods as open source to create a much larger effect than having individual engineers just you know, working on their own or working in the old fashioned ways. Um, we believe that it is a much more efficient engineering method and probably the future the same way that prefab houses made out of, you know, container units is becoming the way that architecture happens quickly. Um, we know that it supports an internally open community and collaboration within a community, which then can teach your organization how to do open source in a sane way. And, um, we're, we're seeing a lot of companies using it that way, which is really gratifying because that's one of the reasons that we started doing it in the first place. Um, as you can see, there are just a lot of uh, organizations and companies using InterSource. These are all companies that have made a mention publicly of using InterSource. Um, we are actively looking for more people that want to tell their stories. We're starting, we, we built this list without you know, asking anybody's permission because we figured a public announcement of, of using InterSource was good enough. 
But these days, people are coming to us and asking if they can tell us their stories. And we're collecting stories all the time. Some of the books that we've written about InnerSource are case studies so that people can see other companies doing similar work. And we're always looking for more of those. We're also always looking for patterns that you're uncovering as you're getting InnerSource working in your community. And you'll hear more about all of these you know, books and patterns and all that stuff in the ensuing conversations. I'm just sort of queuing up ideas for you now. Um, we'd like you to believe that it is not so scary to figure out open source by figuring out inner source first. Inner source can fix problems in your engineering organization and simultaneously get you ready for open source in the world, um, you know, without any brand risk because you're starting inside. Um, it's really not so scary as climbing these steps to the Wuhan monastery. Um, and partly it's not so scary because of the resources that we've created. And we is the entire InnerSource community. Um, InnerSource Commons community is really vibrant. There's lots of people working. There's lots of opportunities to plug in and add your two cents or your 10 cents or your, or your you know, whatever you have to bring to the table. Um, it's a burgeoning community in the same way that Apache was seven years in. And um, it's also really good people. Like we, we are, we have fun. Um, we all really believe that this is the way to move forward, and uh, we're helping each other find ways to get there. So, um, most recently, our biggest news in the last month is that Claire Dillon, who has been helping us for um, a while now, uh, and been involved in InnerSource since 2017. Um, has now become our executive director. She's our first executive director and she's doing a bang up job. And you'll hear more about that a bit later. But this is to me an example of how this organization is professionalizing in such a sweet way and um, really, you know, getting ready for the surge that we feel coming. We're seeing the beginnings of now. And that's what I have to say. Um, I know you're going to hear from the president of the organization later, uh, maybe next. I'm the chair. And um, thank you very much for coming. And again, happy InterSource Day. And we hope to see you involved in the chat stream, which is one of the best ways to, to stay connected within this activity that we're doing together. And we hope you have some fun today. Thank you. <laughs>